project, much like a performance of a piece of music, had uh, was made was created through a whole bunch of people, and that would have been Jeff as the conductor and the client, Manuel as the composer, and my team as the orchestra. <laughs> um, and so, in the spirit of that, we're all going to talk very briefly to the project and then finish with one more. So I'll hand over to Jeff. Um, yeah, the Mori House was a purpose-built beach house on the Morning Peninsula um, near the Port Phillip Bay, and it was designed really as a um, you know purpose-built beach house to accommodate all weather conditions and to accommodate a multi-generational family and a place for the extended family from Australia and Japan to meet and stay. And th this was the brief that we handed out to the architect, and it was really written like this: a place to cook and eat internally and externally, a place to live, a place to sleep with separate bungalows place to play, a place to work, a place to wash and shit, a place to relax, a place to swim and bounce, a place to grow things, and a place to share with family and friends. Uh, the brief was purposely non-specific, however still pragmatic, as we were interested in sort of challenging ideas of domestic and the manner in which a home might be planned or arranged on the site. It was also drawing together a number of relationships, skills, ideas that have been developing through the Metro over the past 30 years. Our other drivers personally for us was really was about longevity and, uh, and the longevity of design and materiality and this sort of loosely branded around, we used to joke around on site that it was going to last 100 years. And the idea was to, and also part of the brief was to minimise external and internal conditions materials that would wear in and not wear out. Concrete was sort of the main consideration, considering the, the location and the corrosive environment and the long-term maintenance. Along with natural stone, 316 stainless, Nicoya pine. And then the idea to include as many passive solid techniques as, as we could. Um, uh, an avoidance of plasterboard, downlights and air conditioning is which are familiar domestic finishes with a, with a strong consideration. Then we worked out how did the project evolve. Over the years of Neo Metro, we have collaborated with many architectural practices, and we have always pursued architects that are interested in ideas and who might challenge the, the place making or context within, they, within where they work. A, a recent one, Nura Rai on the Morning Peninsula, which is a recent project of ours was initially run as a sort of small group of architects to explore the ideas of a beach house and what could be and, and what that could be. It was during COVID we ran this online with MA Manuel. Uh, we're very much a part of the process and collective discussion. And it was from this investigation and recent travels to Fort Portugal, we felt there were some similarities in the topography, lifestyles and ideas and then I'll, um, you know, that's sort of the, how the house started to evolve, and then we sort of formed a team of the three of us, and I'll hand it over to Karen. From here, I'm hiding down here, okay? All right, well, I have worked with Jeff for 25 years, often by his side, over a few sites, <laughs> interpreting and delivering projects uh, for Near Metro. He's been my mentor. Uh, he's got a nuanced understanding of how we live and how we can complement this through what we build. He's brave and not respected by convention. This is a beautiful house, beautifully built and easy to live in, and I hope you get to come and visit. When Manuel came to Australia in early 2020, we met on the deck of Jeff's original beach shack, which is the yellow dot, um, a few doors away from the Maori house site, and talked through Jeff's eyes to ears. By the time Manuel left, a week later, the concept for Mori House had been drawn. These sketches are from Manuel's notebook when he was here. The concept is simple and elegant. Internally, the house is divided into four areas delineated by cross expressed as a lantern, which is the red here. It's made up, and the plans obviously are highlighting these areas, a place to cook and eat, a place to live, a place to play, a place to sleep, a place to wash, a place to work. In turn, uh, sorry, I'll get here. Our role was uh, to deliver the concept in an Australian context. 
We had some challenges uh, convincing Manuel we needed a handrail on the roof deck and a fence around the pool. Um, <coughs> but uh, we, delivered, we developed his sketches into details and tweaked his ideas to meet local requirements whilst juggling Jeff's passion for change. If anybody knows <laughs> Jeff, will know that. Um, we regularly met on uh, Zoom, not our best shots. Um, um, our, our amateurs working in two big drawings and models and MA in BIM. Jeff built it, working with many of the subcontractors who we've both worked with on earlier near Metro projects. There was a shorthand in communication and ideas, some things we'd done before, and others were developed on site with pencil on a piece of board or a concrete wall. This is a building designed to wear in, not out. A place to grow old in and for a family to grow up in. A place where professional respect and generosity have been rewarded. A place where diversity of culture, in this case, Australian, Japanese and Portuguese, has been celebrated. And I'll to my mind. Okay. So after receiving the brief, as you can imagine, was the kind of a brief that I give to my students, so the first to say it, but really it's the <laughs> thing that you do to the students, I was very surprised. So I immediately accepted the idea of doing a house in a, such a very long distance. And in reality, when I came here, when we start the project also with Karen, uh, we start designing the idea. And the idea is like, it was the, in the end to have a way of doing the foundation of a house for a family. So when we start like with the Roman <coughs> projects or in Brasilia, designing the cross. So we decided to make the cross not built, but the cross of light, the cross of light in here, that also divided the spaces or the four spaces in four gardens. So there's a garden to entrance, a main garden, a garden that is more private for the parents, and the other garden where you have now uh, some cultivation of the chickens and all that. Is, uh, so it's like, so we start with this idea of the going to divide, going to put everything together, but at the same time, we were also interested in not designing a house that was imposing anything. That, and I see that it's very important in terms of the way we design houses or the way we design spaces for people to live, that we are not interested in impose uh, any conditions to the people, but we are interested in providing possibilities. And that's the house it's about. So we provide this possibility of using the house having many spaces that are together but separate at the same time that you can use also the roof and you have to access to the roof to have a certain freedom. And freedom is the word that we wanted to use when we think about designing spaces for people to live. And it's about these ideas that you can then use and the family have been using it in a different way that I would imagine but was very also very rich. And it's an interesting idea that you can use and during time change. At the same time, as you can imagine, coming from, from far away, the idea of a mark cross that starts the point on the project was was fundamental for us. So. And then was collaborated, as Karen mentioned, <laughs> about with Karen. Sorry? A minute. Okay, it's over. That was the process of the project. It's also very important that it's to defend this idea that starts when we start discussing the project and then lasts until the moment where it's not good.